All right, for our texture hand uh, surrealism project, the paper you're using is our drawing paper, the good quality. Please don't use printer paper. The paper is nine inches this way and 12 inches this way. So double check, make sure it's, you've got the right size paper for the work. Um, that's the last time you're gonna need the ruler for this project. Um, no borders for this one. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start out by tracing your non-dominant hand. My, my writing hand, my drawing hand, my hand that I feed myself with is my dominant hand, and my non-dominant or supporter hand is my left hand. Now, if you're left-handed, you'll, you'll be drawing your right hand. If you're right-handed like me, you'll be drawing your left hand. We're going to draw with your palm facing up because we're going to be drawing the realistic textures of the palm of your hand. And if you draw this, trace this way, and then try to include these textures, these creases, these surface areas onto the reverse image, it's hard, hard to make it work. All right, so you're gonna trace upward. When you trace, you're gonna be tracing around your hand, just an outline drawing of your hand to start with. Make sure that you keep your pencil at a 90 degree angle to the paper straight up and down at a 90 degree angle to the paper. Don't let it go under the under your hand or at an angle any other than 90 degrees. And that way it, your fingers will be a little wider, your hand will be a little wider, but it won't get too skinny to, to apply the textures here. It'll get a little wider because of the thickness of the pencil to the point, right? There's a little bit of depth from where it meets your arm and hand to where the point of the pencil hits the paper. Start with about, an, couple inches uh, from down from the top and at least an inch from both sides of your fingers on your paper. You're going to spread your fingers out, no hand signals, right? Just spreading your fingers out because you're going to be putting a different texture into each finger. And when you start, start your line drawing just above, about an inch above the bottom of the paper. That'll give you the chance to add something else down at the bottom that the hand might be coming out of, like a flower pot or water or a cloud if you turn it upside down. So when you draw, just don't push against your, your hand and don't press hard. I'm using a 3B pencil so you can see it, but I recommend you, you use an HB pencil to do this. You might wanna take off your rings and, and bracelet and stuff like that. And then as you trace, try not to uh, go too fast and try to stay going right up next to your hand's uh, surfaces, all right? Now, as I get to my thumb, I can release this part of my hand, so I'm gonna just gently rock it, but I'm making sure that my hand is lined up at where I've already drawn, lined up with my drawing. My fingers don't matter, as long as I can start up my drawing again where I stopped uh, with the previous finger, and then I'm gonna trace around my thumb. Now, you could stand and do it the entire time with your hand as flat against the paper, depending on what kind of, oops, sorry, I'm, Sorry, going under my thumb, w depending on what kind of paper you have, uh, what kind of table you have, sorry. Now, you can see I made an error there. So this is where you get to, to make some changes, right? You get to edit it out. I don't like that edge at all. So I'm just gonna take it out and I'm gonna look at my hand and I'm going to freehand draw what I actually see. So here's my knuckle for my thumb. My, my thumb comes this way and then my knuckle comes out and then it comes down into my wrist a little bit more. Um, that's a little too low, so I'm going to bring it up just a bit. More like that. All right, so you get to edit it if you need to. If it got too wide, you could, you could bring an edge in. Like I could bring this edge in by just a little bit and narrow it down. I could bring the other edge in uh, too to do it. Also, remember, you know, if you have some weird areas, remember, we're going to be putting different textures on the fingers. So those, if they're not quite the shape of fingers, it's not a big deal. Um, you can edit out your ring if you don't want to take it off. You can leave it on. Um, this really big knuckle here, I'm just going to decrease it so that when I do put a texture into that surface, it's easy for me to, to make the, the, the changes. I can round off my fingers at this time if I want to. The next step is to apply tone inside of the hand like this. So you're going to put your pencil on its edge, and you're going to make a general tone, the darkness of your hand, your hand is much much darker than the white paper. If it's not, um, then you're, you, you have a, a, a melatonin type of issue. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, your, your skin tone is darker than the white paper, no matter what. 
even if you're the lightest skin tone person, if you're as light as this paper, you probably have a medical issue, and you should see your doctor. Make an appointment. All right, so using your pencil on its edge, remember, it gives you tone. It's the way you, you put the values down, and I'm not going to bother with the fingers. I'm going to go right up to the edges of the fingers and the edge of the hand where the, the fingers meet up with the palm of the hand. I'm laying down nice, even tonality in a light application. I'm still using my 3B pencil. That's the one I recommend you start with. If you don't have a 3B and you have a 2B, use your 2B. You can always go darker with a darker pencil, but you can also do what I'm going to do, which is layer, all right? So I've got one application across there. It's darker than the white paper, but still not as dark as my hand. I'll turn my paper this way so you can see. So I'm gonna just take another layer and go right on top of the first layer to get to a closer approximation of my skin tone, all right? So it's a matter of going gradually to build the tonality, the darkness of your own skin, the value. Remember, everything has its darkness or lightness, and that's called value. And to create the values, we're using our pencil to create, we're doing tones to create the values. Okay, we're adding tone on tone on tone until we get to the darkness of our skin tone, our darkness of our skin. Now, if you've got a really dark skin tone, you might want to start with your um, 4B or your 3B if you have it, and then move up to your 5B or 6B. Um, looks like I've got something under my paper there that I'm picking up, probably some eraser crumbs. Once you've got your skin tone, uh, that's pretty close, but it's not quite there. The next step is your hands are not flat pieces of paper. They get light more directly here and it bounces light back to your eyes more directly and it's lighter there. The side edges of my hands and my wrist and my arm get less light, just like a texture. Lower lying areas or areas facing away from the light source get less light source and reflect back less light to our eyes. So it's darker here and here and here and even right in here than it is right here. So I wanna build up those values and it's not, it's a gradual change because I'm, I'm not a brick or a piece of wood with a, an angle, right? I'm not a piece of something that's angular. I'm uh, organic and I gradually change from here to there. So I want you to re remember you're making your, you're imitating your real textures of your arm and your wrist and you're adding textures from real objects to your fingers. So real textures of your palm and your wrist are soft and smooth, right? Uh, in most cases, unless you do a lot of heavy lifting or you're a ball player or you're a weight lifter, you might have lots of calluses, um, but they still will be mostly smooth um, up until you get to the creases and the wrinkles, okay? So you would do that on both sides, building up your values to make it look believably three-dimensional, so it doesn't look flat, it curves away from the light source. You want to be careful not to let it be hard-edged, where it meets up with the skin tone. It should be a gradual change. So I've blended with my, thing, my, my pencil, just making it darker with more passes here. I don't press harder, and then I do fewer of them as it comes to the body of the hand to make it a gradual change. Okay, closer and more of them along the edge. Stay inside the edges for a hard edge there, but a soft edge as you go toward the, um, the bulk of the, the hand and the arm. Okay, so right in here, this is just all thumb, and I'm going to have a different texture there, but I might want to take a little bit more of my real texture from my palm and my thumb and go right up to this knuckle. Okay, so maybe my texture is only this big instead of this big, and that's part of the... Um, decision-making you can do for yourself. I'm going to go up right up to that edge, and it's a little darker in some of that, but I'm going to be using my eraser to pull out some values too. All right, so that's your first step. Then your next step is to look at the creases and place them where they belong. I, I haven't quite gotten to my tonality, but I'm going to go ahead and get you on that step next so we I don't have to make multiple videos. So right in here, half of the distance from there on my hand, which is there, right? 
right there on my finger where it meets up with my palm of my hand is right there. Halfway down from there is where my thumb meets with my hand, and that's where my first crease is, is halfway down, right about there. And it comes into to this area here, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and continue this edge into my hand too. So this edge actually comes beyond where this edge is for my thumb, and it just kind of peters out, it disappears into there. There's a lap of skin that goes up like that, and another one, there's that one, and then there's another one here that goes a little higher, and it curves and goes into my, my um, crease right there. I went a little high with that, so it's going to come down a little lower. Um, and that's where this comes in, that line that separated the, the side edge halfway down, just kind of meets up with that first bump up right there. And then there's the another crease that's just above it, about a fourth, third of the way up to this from here to there, about a third of the way up. And it comes up above this bump up, comes on down, and then just under my middle finger right here, about half of the distance from there to there, a little less, to there, is where it really dramatically makes a, a change in direction. Okay, so about there, and then it comes down like this, and over like this, right? There's a little curve, and then it comes right here, and it just kind of fades away. And then right here, it comes down and almost to the pad down here, but fades away before it gets here. Really lightly, you're drawing these in. You don't want them to be dark, because if they're too dark, that came in a little too high. If they get too dark, then you're going to have difficulty making them look like tones and textures instead of lines. Remember, we don't have lines on our hands. We have creases that go a different direction. And notice I, I'm gently cupping my hand. It's not flat out. I have gently just relaxed so that I can see those things more easily as they um, curve around my hand. This one comes up and comes comes like this, comes over, comes upward, and then back downward, okay? And then it has a little offshoot that comes from there and goes like that, all right? So you want to draw those in, and then I'll have another video for the next step after that.